Hello, this is Nico with Automation Hero, and today I'll be walking you through our new feature, Sonar, which is a process discovery and data visualization tool. So before we get into a uh, demonstration of Sonar itself, uh, first let's set a little bit of context for what kind of data we will be analyzing and visualizing. Um, with healthcare being at the forefront of, uh, of a lot of minds today, uh, we've built this demonstration sort of around a, a healthcare uh, scenario. So looking at the data we'll be, uh, we'll be processing today, uh, an example of it would be a number of, um, a number of data elements related to you know, vital statistics. Uh, you know, diastolic and systolic blood pressure, gender, temperature, what have you. Uh, additionally, we've got uh, a number of process uh, activities. So this is basically tracking uh, patients as they go through a process. You know, they submit a form, tests are scheduled, performed, they get results, and then there's, uh, you know, admission to the hospital or, or what have you. Um, so this will be the data that we will be, uh, we will be visualizing uh, from a process standpoint and just from a statistical standpoint. So looking at this automation flow, uh, this is an example of how we can read data sort of in bulk. This, is, this has been uh, uh, accrued by an external system and we're just reading it in. We go through any number of ETL or data transformation steps. Uh, we can read data from multiple sources. Uh, we, can do, we, we can do any type of uh, cleanup or modification or ETL that's, uh, that's required. Um, this is truly an end-to-end -end solution to get data in, get it in the appropriate format, and then feed it for, uh, for analysis. So we go through the various ETL processes and we send the data into uh, these outputs for process mining and for uh, metric analysis. So getting into Sonar, we'll go in here and I'll walk you through uh, creation of a new dashboard, and then we'll look at one I've prepared a little bit earlier. Uh, as with everything in the Automation Hero solution, uh, it is a no-code interface. Everything is entirely point and click. If I want to create a new visualization dashboard, I click the button, call it my new dashboard. And now we have our blank template of a, of a dashboard that we can add whatever uh, visualization widgets we want to. I can create any number of subboards, so I'll just rename this process map, and we'll start with that. We'll start with a view of the, uh, the processes that we've, we've passed into the system. So to add something into the visual dashboard here, we click on Add Widget, and I get a list of the uh, various types of charts I can add. In this case, and we'll look at the other ones later, in this case, I'll add Process Map, say OK, and give it a name, Medical Process Map. I'll choose what metric set of data I want. And actually, this is a, an, a, a, good, uh, a good point to mention. Um, we've been asked in the past, you know, can uh, a single dashboard take data from multiple different automations, different sets of uh, metric data that, it's, uh, that uh, are being accrued, and present them in one concise platform? The answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, we would make that selection here. In this case, I'm going to look at the process mining data. Say OK. And now what we have is a visual representation of the, uh, the processes that patients in our test data set have gone through. So if I zoom in a little bit, we'll see that the process starts. Most in this case are going to have submitted a form. Uh, some, for some, the process ends right there. For some, we go, uh, they, they have a test scheduled, the test is performed, uh, the results are positive, the results are negative, and what have you. This is part of your typical and really standard kind of medical process. But what we're looking at here is actually a, uh, a simplified view. This is, this is the most common path. So if, if you were doing, you know, um, process discovery, and you just sort of want to understand and visualize what your primary processes look like, this would be a great view for you. Um, but if you want to get into more of the, the, the mining for exception cases, edge cases, situations that you may want to look for improvement or try to understand why things happen, uh, for that, we'd want to see a more complete view of all the data. So for that, we'd go into this widget section and look at this, uh, this grid on the side here. What we have here is a representation of the frequency at which these, these patterns occur. So what we're looking at in this process map here, um, which is really straightforward and easy to understand, is what's happening most often. As we move this slide bar to the right, 
you'll see that the process map gets more and more complex. And what's, what's happening here is that uh, the different maps are representing uh, different levels of frequency in what happens in the data. And as I go all the way to the right, this represents everything that, that, that happened in the data set all the time, regardless of whether it's common or, or atypical. And if I zoom in here, we can see that this has turned into a little bit more of a, of a sort of spaghetti view. Um, from, a, from the starting point, it, it's no longer going to one or two places. It's going to at least half a dozen. We have some things that are looping onto themselves. We have, some, we have processes that uh, occur in, that uh, result in circles. And this can happen for any number of reasons. It may be issues in the data. Uh, it may be actual things in the process where something happened that's, that's unusual or unexpected. And this would be a great way to visualize it. Um, but understandably, when you look at something like this, you can very easily become overwhelmed with, wait, which line is going where and how do I know where it's going? So to help you visualize it even more, one of the features of Sonar is, uh, is kind of a visual animation and focus. And if I scroll down here and I see the, the sort of frequency of, of, each, uh, of each pathway, if I scroll to one of the more infrequent ones, we click the play button, we immediately get a focus on it, and an animation will track through um, from beginning to end how it, uh, how it went through every step in the process. And if we trace it through, if we focus on it a little bit, this is actually a really interesting one for, uh, it, we're talking about a, a medical use case here, were I a hospital administrator? I would look at this and go, okay, we need to think about it a little more. So if we follow this particular path, Somebody submitted a form, their test was scheduled, test was performed, the result was positive, so they were admitted to the hospital, ultimately discharged, then resubmitted a form and readmitted to the hospital. So were I an administrator, I'd look at this process and go, okay, what happened with these 256 people? Um, was it a misdiagnosis? Was it an issue in the, the discharge process? Uh, was it faulty testing? Uh, was it a recurrence of, uh, of the illness? So there are a lot of things that I can look at for something that, that seems a little bit unusual, but now that I can sort of visualize it uh, kind of directly and, and separated from the, um, from the rest of the, the myriad processes that can go on, I can really focus in on that and say, let's follow this path and see where, where it leads. Um, one other feature that I'd like to speak to before moving into uh, Uplift and making this more intelligent is actually uh, the ability to set, uh, to set costs and, and, and sort of visually represent uh, the cost aspect to these types of um, processes. So often, you know, you start looking at, you look at a process and one process is far more costly than another. You know, maybe an admission to a hospital is significantly more uh, costly than a test being performed. So if I wanted to uh, if I wanted to sort of visually represent that as well and really put it at my fingertips, what I could do is right click on a node, click on set cost, and here I can actually set what do I want the cost of this particular node to be. In this case, let's just pick an arbitrary number, call it 1,000. And when, the, when it refreshes, uh, it will actually show you. So there were 885 incidents that came into admitted to hospital at a cost of $885,000. And what's nice about this is as the data continues to update, uh, as, these, as the automation continues to run and we keep feeding newer and newer data into this visualization tool, these numbers will change dynamically over time as new data becomes available. So this, it's kind of a powerful tool in terms of uh, sort of a, a cost or numeric analysis of, of this overall process. Now, we've seen this process, we've seen how we can look for abnormalities, but uh, what we at Automation here want to do is try and take it to the next level. We want to make it actionable and we want to make it significantly more intelligent. We want to leverage all this knowledge uh, that we've, we've processed, that we as humans have gone through and analyzed and said, this is what I want to learn more about. So what we've also done is built integration between the sonar, uh, the sonar function and our integrated AI studio, where we can build our own deep learning models uh, to, get to, to bring artificial intelligence into our automation processes. So let's take an example. Um, in this case, let's look at, look at something interesting. Let's look at test performed. So from a test being performed, there are a number of outputs. Sometimes the result is positive, sometimes it's negative, sometimes the process just ends, sometimes it heads over here to somebody going straight to the ICU or what have you. Um, what I'd like to know from here is, how can I make my processes more intelligent such that when a test is performed, 
what does the system think will be the next most likely uh, step to occur given everything it knows, all the institutional knowledge of the process and all the underlying data. So the way we do that, and as with everything, it's all point and click. I right click and I choose create AI model. And what it will do is it will take me directly to our, uh, our AI studio where we can build a deep learning model with all the metadata we have available. So right now we've got all the institutional knowledge from the process and we have also all of these statistical fields that we saw in that initial data set, the, you know, the various blood pressure, the gender, the age, the heart rate. We can incorporate any or all of this data. I can remove these as needed and I can build models to any level of compl complexity that, uh, that I want to. Now, I'm not a data scientist. I can build this deep learning model uh, completely point and click. I'll just add a, a, um, an extra dense layer in between. This model is actually immediately ready to be trained and then deployed into uh, an automation. Uh, for purposes of this demonstration, I've actually pre-built and pre-trained one. I'll show, you, I'll show you how we can sort of bring this, uh, bring this knowledge full circle uh, and try to give us more intelligent solutions on the fly. So I'll jump back into the, well, we don't need to save that. I will jump back into the automation flow. And we'll look at a slightly different flow. This one is uh, simulating live medical data. So the, the concept here is someone goes to a testing center uh, and the, uh, the tester is emailing in uh, some vital statistics and some information about the person. So here we look at some of these sample emails. Uh, there's a little bit of information there, and here's all their, uh, all their vital stats, you know, their age, their gender, heart rate, you know, pulse oxygen, or what have you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, because Automation Hero offers an end-to-end -end solution, we can parse the data. In this case, this particular function takes that message and extracts all the critical fields and puts it into those fields that exactly what we saw earlier, things like gender, heart rate, blood pressure, and I'll scroll over to the right, temperature. It's just calling ex ex uh, exactly what it finds in the message. And then from here, we've actually integrated an AI model that we've built based on a process map. The way we've brought it into a flow, as with any other step in this process, all point and click. I click on the plus button. I get my list of over 200 functions that I can add into the flow to uh, manipulate, transform, filter, otherwise enhance the data. In this case, I'll use a pre-trained AI model uh, that, was built on a, uh, that was built on a process map that we were just looking at. And we're sending it all of the data that we've pulled out from each individual email. And the output is that it will predict what it thinks the next most likely step in the process will be. And in this case, I've set up just a couple of examples to, to, uh, to demonstrate. Uh, we'll look at this one, this, this shorter one, where it looks to see if the target action is equal to result negative. In this case, the person is likely to have a negative result of the test, so we can recommend they stay home and do home care. And to that end, we can send a customized email back saying, you know, this person should, uh, should, should, uh, should remain at home until otherwise contacted. Now let's look at a slightly more complex output. In this case, the target action is, is if it's equal to the result being positive. So it's patient is likely to have a positive result. Now we're, we're doing three things. Uh, we're going to recommend that the person be, uh, be sent to a hospital for further testing. Uh, we're going to send a notification message to the hospital itself to be aware of an incoming patient. And we'll also contact uh, the hospital's patient database and upload all of the vital statistics uh, that we've accrued as part of the email. So we can sort of facilitate this process. And you see here it going out to three points. You know, one email uh, going out notifies the hospital, one sends it to the person recommending hospitalization, and one contacts a, a database uh, that will send all of the vital statistics in. So ultimately what we've done here is, is taken uh, knowledge, historical knowledge from uh, processes that we've seen. We've seen how patients have gone from step one to two to three, et cetera. Uh, we've built an, an AI model on it. We've incorporated into a flow where we don't have that institutional knowledge. All we know of these people is that they're coming in uh, and they may be, and, and, and they've, they've undergone some tests. And now we've, uh, we've got these statistics and we can say, okay, given everything we know and everything, everything we know about our history, everything we know about the person, what do we predict will happen next and how can we facilitate whatever subsequent steps there are. And this is something that's obviously extensible to any industry. It's a very, very powerful tool to make 
our, uh, our decision making in, in the automation significantly more intelligent. All right, so that is kind of the life cycle of the, uh, of the process map. So what I'd like to show you now uh, very briefly is the data visualization aspect, uh, what we call metrics. So I have a prepared board here and I'll also show you how we create new ones. So here's an example of some metric data that I pre-built based on the data that we sent in. We can create any number of charts, you know, bar charts or donut or line or area or what have you. Uh, I have configurability to add filters to uh, focus on particular segments of the chart. So in this one, for example, uh, various activities for people over age 80. This would be admissions to the ICU uh, based on gender, pulse oxygen, what have you. But how would I manipulate this? How would I change it? How would I adjust it? Um, there are a number of things you can do here. If I want to leave this board as is and work on something independently, it's as simple as right clicking and going clone. I will get a duplicate of my board and now I can make whatever changes I want here while retaining uh, my previous setup. If I want to remove them, all I need to do is right click and do remove. If I want to uh, move it around, point and click to drag it. If I want to resize it, click and drag to, oh, let's, hide, let's remove that, point and click to resize. So if I wanted to say, clear this entirely and build something completely new, how would I do that? I'd go back up here where we saw our process map, I'd click add widget. And here I get my, uh, my list of uh, available functions. So let's build a couple just as a for example. Uh, let's see if we can rebuild something along the lines of that, that donut chart we saw. So we'll choose categorical donut chart. Let's call it processes. Uh, We'll choose what data we want to work with, in this case our metric data, and we will choose activity. Actually, let's rename this to activities, and then we'll fine tune it. So what we'll do is we'll say OK, and we'll get a donut chart of all activities. But let's say I want to focus this down on a particular group or subgroup. What I would do is I'd select it, I'd go into my filter section, and I would choose what filter do I want to apply. And here we have all of the different data elements that were, uh, that were available from our data set that we, that we sent in for processing. Let's say I want to look at uh, gender. Let's look at, uh, let's look at men who are under age 30. And we see how the, 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 uh, the chart has changed to reflect any number of uh, filters that we can add. Likewise, if I wanted to add, say, uh, a line chart, let's show an example of data aggregation over time. Uh, let's choose a line chart. Let's call it average temperature. We'll choose our metric set. We will pick uh, time. How do we want to aggregate? We want to aggregate. Let's look at it uh, at daily. Because we'll look at example, we'll look at how a how a graph would look if we don't have every uh, every day populated, which is absolutely fine. Uh, we're going to look what data element we're going to look at. We'll look at temperature, and we'll look at average. We'll click on that, and we'll get our graph generated. We'll extend that. You know, we want this to be prominent. We'll move it up to the top, and we can see sort of the average uh, body temperature. It's in it's in centigrade here um, for everyone in our data set. But it, well, let's say we want to we want to change its color. Simple as point and click. We'll click on that, move it to something in the green area. We'll do that. And if we wanted to uh, add a filter, instead of looking at the average temperature of everyone, let's look at the average temperature of people who have been admitted to the hospital. And see, and the, uh, the uh, graph dynamically changes based on our filter configuration. So here we, so this is just a way to sort of uh, visualize whatever data is in the system using any number of charts and structure. And as we saw in the, in the, uh, in the earlier metrics set, you know, we have bar charts and area charts and what have you. And as long as the data is in the system, uh, you'll be able to create these sort of visual dashboards to very rapidly uh, review the data. And as I mentioned earlier with the process map where we saw the, uh, the cost had the ability to, uh, to be updated uh, as new data comes in. Likewise here, as new data comes in, whenever this screen renders, uh, whoever is monitoring this will get the most up-to-date uh, statistics within the system for all of the integrated data. 
And so uh, with that, uh, thank you for your time and your kind attention, and um, happy automation. <laughs>